Well, welcome, this is now question 8 for um, LXL C3 uh, June 2015 paper. Now, um, this question is really quite a nasty one actually. Um, it says, I haven't moved properly there, uh, sec 2a uh, plus tan 2a, and we're asked to prove that that is equal to cos a plus sin a over uh, cos a take sin a. Now, this could easily be replaced with x's, so don't be put off by the fact it says a's. Another thing to not be put off by is the fact that it both that it says 2a. Now, as I said, that's the same as saying 2x. But because they're both 2x, we don't need to be so concerned straight away. However, we will need to be able to change them into a double angle formula. But the fact it says sec 2a, we have absolutely no idea what sec 2a is. We know what sec x is or sec a is because we look at the third letter that says cos. Oh, uh, well, then uh, sec a is 1 over cos a. And using that idea, sec, sec 2a is cos 1 over cos 2a. Okay, so that's the that's what the first one is. Now we've got a choice here. So we've got to end up having it sorry, in uh, this kind of form. But to have it in that kind of form, obviously we need to change it into causes and signs. Now the first one, obviously, we want to change that into cos. We know how to do that. It's just 1 over cos of 2a. But tan 2a, well, there's two things we can have for that. We can either have our uh, 2 tan a over 1 take tan squared a by using the addition rule um, or we can either have uh, sine 2a over cos 2a as being equal to ta tan 2a as well but if it, looking at this one so if we look at the first one the double angular one then imagine us putting that over there that doesn't help us get anywhere near this because it's still only in terms of, of tan so I mean, possibly we could replace the tan squared with sec squared a, a take 1, but that's not going to help us. And you could say, okay, well, that's 1 over cos, and then flip it, but you just end up getting yourself in a mess. So uh, we're not going to use that one. So the only other one we can change it to is uh, sine 2a over cos 2a. And looking at that formula, it's quite convenient that that formula has got exactly the same denominator as the first one, 1 over cos 2a. So we could just combine it as one fraction. So sine 2a over cos 2a plus 1 over cos 2a so we combine that as one fraction so therefore it's all over cos 2a obviously um, and then it's 1 plus sine 2a so it's cos 2a uh, 1 plus sine 2a over cos 2a now this is where we change it to our double angle because we need to have it now in terms of single angles and we've only got double angles here so our sine 2a so I'll just put it at the side for you so we know Sine 2a is uh, 2 sine cos a, and our cos 2a is um, cos squared a take sine squared a. Okay, now we're going to have to sub both of these in, so that's the first thing I would do. Now, obviously, we don't leave it cos 2a on the bottom because we need to all of them in, double ang in single angles, sorry. So it's 1 plus uh, 2 sine a cos a over cos squared a take sine squared a now this bit is the most difficult bit of all and that's partially because okay well that's very good we've got 2 sine a cos a over cos squared a take sine squared a now some of you if you don't see this next step you might be thinking okay well uh, 2 sine a cos a well it's a sine a and a cos a and then we've got sine a and a cos squared sine squared and a cos squared on the bottom Surely there should be some cancelling here. Well, no, because that's 2 times sine a times cos a, and we've got cos squared a take sine squared a on the bottom. We can't cancel it. You just, you can't do that. So, we have to think, okay, what can we do? So, let, let's go through the, what we could possibly do here. Well, we can't do anything with a 2 sine a cos a, because we've just said, there's no, the only other thing we could put that in is sine 2a. And that's what we've just changed, so we wouldn't want to go backwards. There's nothing we could do with a cos squared a take sine squared a, apart from maybe saying, okay, well, cos squared a plus sine squared a equals 1, and rearranging it to get that. Um, maybe cos squared a, so then you'd have 1 plus 2 sine a cos a over um, 2, uh, negative 2 uh, sine squared a, or 2 cos squared a, or, or whatever you might end up having. 
um, on the bottom. But that's not going to allow us to cancel anything down. So what we're going to have to do, this one is the only one that I've not referred to. Now I said cos squared a plus sine squared a equals 1. Now that's related to on the bottom, and that's the hardest thing to spot. So essentially what we've got to do is replace that 1 with cos squared a plus sine squared a. So that's what we do. Just write sine squared a plus cos squared a on the bottom, on the top to it, plus 2 sine a cos a. Now I'll explain why I've, how the thought process has come to that in a second. Okay, so the reason that I've come to that idea is because, mm. do apologise, this 2 sine a cos a, you can almost look at that as though well, when you've got a, when you're factorising it, um, I'm not giving it away actually, when you're factorising a quadratic you'll have x squared plus 2x plus 3. That's almost like the 2x bit of a quadratic, if you can imagine it as such. Um, so, that'd be the main bit, then we're missing a squared bit on the top. And obviously, as you can see over here, we've got, we've got, um, singles, we've not got squared, so we need to get rid of this squaring somehow. And um, there's a couple of ways we get rid of the squaring, square root, but we can't square root it because uh, there's nothing that we know that it's equal to that we can square root and work through. So that'd be changing the whole idea of this completely, because it doesn't say the square root of uh, sec 2a plus tan 2a, it just says sec 2a plus tan 2a, so we can't square root anything to get rid of any of the powers. So we have to factorise it. So that's the next step that we have to do. So actually, try to explain that step by explaining another step, but, you know, whatever. Um, one sec, let me just uh, double check this, because I don't want to try and factorise this in my head and I'll go wrong. So, you've got to constantly be looking at, at that, what we're eventually trying to get, and go, okay, how can we get to that? Um, and that's kind of, might have helped you work your way through this. So, it's uh, sine a plus cos a, so i just write it out. Sine a plus cos a, brackets, and then brackets cos a plus sine a. Okay, and then on the bottom we have uh, cos a take sine a and cos a plus sine a. So cos a take sine a, bracket. and cos a plus sine a. Okay, so you should be able to see these two um, cancel out, so we're just left with our sine a plus cos a over cos a take sine a. Okay, right, so, and then you put as required. Okay, so that's a really, really nasty um, five marks. However, the next four mark one, you could still have got, uh, so I'll just break that down how the five marks works. Okay, so the first thing you'd get, you'd get a mark for writing it at, at this point, you'd get a mark for doing that as 1 over cos 2a, and that as sine 2a cos 2a. You get another mark for putting in a double angle formula. Obviously, you don't get sing another mark here just for simplifying it down, you don't get any marks for that. So you get a mark for rearranging it, and then putting the formula in, and then getting to this stage. And then your other two marks are for factorising it and simplifying it down to get the right, correct answer. So that's five marks there. Well, you might have got a mark for that, but I wouldn't bank on that being a mark. Okay, um, so that's part A. Part B says, um, it says sec 2a plus tan 2a, so it obviously means for you to use this cos a plus sin a over cos a take sin a business. Um, to solve between 0 and 2 pi uh, for theta, so theta is between 0 and 2 pi, and sec theta plus tan theta, 2 theta, sorry, is equal to a half, so that's cos a plus sine a over cos a take sine a is equal to a half. So that's the first thing I'd write. So for part b, I'd put uh, cos a plus sine a over cos a take sine a equals a half. And we've got to find it in terms of uh, pi between 0 and 2 pi, uh, radians, sorry. So the first thing, obviously, we have to have this in terms of one trig function. But before we do any of that, um, because we can't just convert it straight away, you've got to simplify it down. So it times both sides, so you can, you can do this either way. Um, so you time 
both sides by Kose take signing. Um, or you can times it by two first. You have to do them two steps. It's, it's irrelevant which way around you do mostly. So it's Kose plus Sine. So sine uh, equals a half times cos a take sine. Now remember that's a half times cos a uh, take a half times sine. So what you can do is times both sides by two. That obviously gets rid of that. And then you're left with two cos a plus two sine is equal to cos a take sine. Now the reason that's is, so be careful, it's not two cos a sine because this isn't cos a times sine, it's cos a plus sine. So when you times it by two, obviously it's an individual. Um, I mean, you're logical people, you hopefully you figured that one out. Um, okay, so rearrange it all on so you get all the cosines on one side and all the sines on one side now. Uh, so that should leave you with um, minus cos a equals 3 sine a, or 3 sine a equals negative cos a. Okay, so. We need to get it in terms of one function here. Now I guess what you could do is not have got to this stage and got, gone 3 sine a plus cos a equals 0 and then use the r formula. However, this that obviously would equal 0 and you only ever use the r formula. I don't think I've probably mentioned this in my video when I should have mentioned it. Um, you only use the r formula when it's not equal to 0. And because this is equal to 0, uh, we can simply divide it all by um, cos. Try to not give it away there, but whatever. So it's uh, it's just over negative cos a. So just over cos a. Sorry. So obviously this becomes three tan a equals minus one. So therefore rearrange it so a is equal to the tan inverse of the third. Kind of skipped out stage there, but you know, as I said, you're intelligent beings, um, so you, you would have got that. Okay. So you get the a is equal to the tan inverse of the third. And remember, your calculator should be in radian mode, um, and you should get an answer to a of equal to negative 0 0.32. Okay. Now the way I the way I do it and the way you do it might differ at this point, but I personally like to use the cast diagram, uh, just my personal preference. Uh, or you can just remember the rules of uh, taking pi or whatever it is. But this explains it in a more um, idea like ideal way personally. Um, Okay, so the cast diagram says cos is positive, all positive, sine, tan. And now because tan is negative, so tan of a is equal to negative 0.32. Um, where tan is normally positive going uh, this way, it's the opposite quadrants, so it goes up there. And the angle is coming up from um, where it is negative, so that's 0.32 there. Remember the angle is not negative 0.32. Um, that's just showing you that is tan is negative there. Okay, so because we're trying to find the range between uh, 0 and 2 pi for theta, because this is, um, oh wait, no, yeah, we're all right, we don't have to do anything with the range. Um, sorry, I thought we did, because I thought we had 2a, but we don't, because a is equal to theta, you could say. Um, sorry, I wrote a, yeah, actually, they did change it in the answer to theta, so, well, I wrote a, if you want to change that to theta, um, but as I said, it's irrelevant because you're getting the same answers. So, because it is between 0 and positive 2 theta, we can't go in the negative sense. So, we have to do 1 to the first line and then 1 again to the second line. So, it's just pi take 0.32 and 2 pi take 0.32. We should get you answers of 2.82 radians. So, sorry, theta should be equal to 2.82 radians or 5.96 radians. I put a little C next to it just to say that's in radians. Okay, so it says the three decimal places. Um, great, so, sorry, if you put that in your calculator you should get an answer. I've got 2.82 and 2.96, but there's probably uh, 5.96, sorry, but there's another another decimal place that I've missed off, uh, so that's not too good. But anyway, um, as I say, you can just slap that in your calculator and you should get an answer. Alright, so um, as I said, part, you could have done part B, so you still could have got four marks, so by the way it says nine marks, as I said, um, obviously, go through the four marks, you obviously get one mark, switch, one mark changing it to what you had in the first, um, what you had over here, another mark for rearranging it, and then another mark for um, 
getting the right answers and another mark so for getting to the right number of decimal places as as you would with any other cast diagram mark uh, scheme okay but I think part A was particularly difficult as I said you can still get part B even if you if you couldn't do part A still uh, uh, it, it helps you out quite nicely alright so that's the end of uh, question 8 thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the last question for uh, June 2015 at XLC3 thanks for watching and uh, see you next video